we have to read this paragraph today. That was for which all this was concentrated. Okay. Slemu so is explaining. He is saying that all that we consider evil, ignorant, okay, and uh, suffering, there is a reason for it. It is not. We don't see the reason, but there is a reason. For it. So now he is saying this ignorance. Why it is necessary? That's what we are going to read the parallel now. Okay. So, yes. <coughs> so who will read? Good morning, Rangadan. Good morning. Good morning, Shiva. Good morning, Chinki. Maybe you can read today. Yes, I I can read. Go ahead. That purpose. Let me just to uh, wear my uh, earphone. Six hundred twelve page. Yes. That purpose for which all this exclusive concentration we call the ignorance is necessary is to trace the cycle of self-oblivion and self-discovery for the joy of which the ignorance is assumed in nature by the secret spirit. It is not that all it is not that all cosmic manifestation uh, would otherwise become impossible, but it would be a quite different man, different manifestation from the one in which we live. It would be confined to the higher higher worlds of the divine existence, or to a typical non-evolving cosmos, where each being lived in the whole light of its own law of nature. And this over, this overs manifestation, this evolving cycle, would be impossible. What is it here? The goal. What is what is it here? The goal would be then the eternal <coughs> the eternal condition. What is here? A stage would be a perpetuated type of existence. <clears throat> it is to find himself in the apparent opposites of his being and his nature that Satchidananda descends into the material, the material nissance and put on its phenomenal ignorance as a superficial mask in which he hides himself from his own conscious energy Living it, living it, living it, self-forgetful and observed in its work and forms. It is in those forms that slowly awake that the slowly awake awaking soul has to accept the phenomenal action of an ignorance, which is really knowledge, which is really knowledge awaking prog progressively out of the original nissans, and it is in the new conditions created by these workings that it has to rediscover itself and divinely transform by that light the, by that light the life which is thus laboring to fulfill the purpose of its descent into the inconscious not to return as speedily as may be to heavens where perfect light and joy are eternal or to the supra cosmic bliss is the object of this cosmic cycle nor merely to repeat the purpose the purposeless round in a long unsatisfactory group of ignorance seeking for knowledge and never finding it perfectly in that case the ignorance would be either an inexplicable blunder of all conscience or a painful and purposeless necessity equally inexplicable but to realize the ananda of the self in other conditions then the supra, then the supracosmic in cosmic being, and to find its heaven of joy and light, even in the oppositions offered by the terms of an of an embodied material existence, by struggle, by struggle therefore, by struggle therefore towards the joy of self-discovery, would seem to be the true object of the birth of the soul in the human body, and of the labor of a human race in the series of its cycles. The ignorance is a necessary, though quite subordinate term, which the universal knowledge has imposed on itself, that that movement might be impossible. Not a blunder, blunder and a fall, but a purposeful descent, not a curse, but a divine opportunity. 
to find and embody the all delight in an intense summary of its, man, man, of its manifoldness to achieve a possibility of the infinite existence which could not be achieved in other conditions, to create out of matter a temple of the divinity would seem to be the task imposed on the spirit born into the material universe. Yes. While reading this para, we are explaining the necessity of ignorance. Okay. <coughs> uh, I, I got an image in my mind and I will share it with you. It is like, let us say, now, <coughs> uh, very often in our ashram, in the holidays, the children are made to either cycle or even walk up to Jinji. Okay. And Jinji is about 75, no, about 40, 50 miles from Pondicherry. And it's not very easy, but they do it. Now, think of a game in which now uh, you are telling that there is a game. We have to go from here to, there is a group of people who are adventurous. And you are telling the group that the adventure that you will do today is to go from here, from Pondicherry, to a place 100 miles away. But I am warning you that it is very, very difficult. Okay. Now, if all of you are agreeing to this adventure, you raise your hands. So all of them raise their hands, 100 of them. Okay, they raise their hands. Yes, we want to take up this challenge. But you warn them that there are rivers to cross, there are forests to go, and the forests are full of animals, dangerous animals. You are likely to get disease, and you may be injured. All these things are there. But are you willing? Then all of them say, yes, we are willing. Okay, and then the game starts. So they start from here and they go. As they keep going, the difficulties start coming up, and one by one, they forget that they have actually, actually accepted this game. That our purpose is to reach that place where there is absolute bliss and enjoyment, and there is no suffering there at all. You have yourself undertaken this game. But after going 25 miles, they, they start complaining. Oh, I'm injured. Why am I suffering? Why is this thing there? Why is it so difficult life? All these type of things go on. Okay? This is exactly what Sri is explaining here. You have forgotten. When you are complaining of suffering and pain, you, are, you have forgotten that you yourself have taken the initiative to undertake this. Adventure. And what is that adventure? I am originally a divine being and I have ananda, I have power, I have also consciousness. But I plunge myself into the opposite of that and start the journey. You have forgotten. When you are complaining of suffering, you have forgotten that you yourself have taken up this challenge. This is the game. But now same way saying, that this need not be the only game. The divine could have created another game in some other universe. Okay. And that is different. But in our universe, this is the game that we play. Okay. So this is, if you keep this image and read the para, it will be very clear what you say. Okay. <clears throat> so I now start reading each sentence. Okay. I didn't read the summary, but I told you the image that came into my mind. You have forgotten yourself, and the whole thing is to recover. So, if even this is told to you mentally, that this is the adventure you yourself will take up, still, some complaint will always be there. Okay? So, this is only for your own good and the adventure that you will accept. I read each sentence. <clears throat> that purpose for which all this exclusive concentration, which we call ignorance, is necessary, that purpose is to trace the cycle of self-oblivion and self-discovery okay, of the joy of which ignorance is assumed by nature <laughs> by the secret spirit. Sorry. <laughs> so, now note the words interestingly, you have assumed the ignorance is not imposed on you. The, it is your, you have agree, agreed to it yourself. Okay? 
and then it's an adventure. Now, the next sentence. This is clear, na? So, it's a game that you are playing. You are coming from the divine, plunging yourself into that which seems to be the undivine. You are assuming, okay, is undivine because you yourself are the divine creature, but you are plunging into the opposite, and then you are seating yourself there. It is not that all cosmic manifestation would otherwise become impossible, but it would be quite a different manifestation from the one in which we live. Okay, so he's saying it is not that all cosmic manifestation would otherwise become impossible. In other words, he is saying that this adventure that we have undertaken could be something else. The divine can't in, in, uh, invent only one game. He can invent 100,000 games. Okay? So it's possible that in other universes, the rules of the game will be different. Okay? That's what he's saying. Evolution can be quite different. It won't be in this way. A gradual evolution. It may not be. If the divine can create a, a universe where there is no evolution. Okay. He could have done so many different types of things. Not part evolution. The possibilities are immense. So divine is not bound to do it only in this way. That's what Sri said. Note carefully. It is not that all cosmic manifestation in other universes okay, would otherwise become impossible. This is not the only way it can be done, but it will be quite different manifestation from the one in which we live. It would be confined to the higher worlds of the divine existence or to a type of non-evolving cosmos. That also is possible. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Where each being lived in the whole light of its own law of nature and this obverse manifestation Obverse means the obverse and reverse. Okay, so the right side and the wrong side of the coin. Okay. This obverse manifestation, <coughs> this evolving cycle would be impossible. It's possible that he would have created other things, um, ways in other universes. What is here, the goal, would then be the eternal condition. He could have created a world where everything is perfect and no, no, no evolution is there. What is our goal? Our goal is divine perfection. Perfection in consciousness, in power and in ananda. And that's exactly what he could have done elsewhere. That's what he's saying. Okay? So, <clears throat> what is here the goal? Here means in this world, this would be then the eternal condition. There will be no evolution at all. What is here? A stage would be the perpetuated state type of existence. He could have done a world where <coughs> the conditions of the world will be there, the conditions of the life will be there, the conditions of the mind will be there, conditions of spiritual conscience will be there, but they'll be static. They'll all be static. He could have created that also. There need not have been any evolution. Okay? It is to uh, stay in the perpetuated type of existence. In fact, these typal beings do, typal worlds do exist. What is here, a stage, would be the perpetuated type of existence, perpetuated eternal, okay? eternal existence. It is to find himself in the apparent opposites of his being and his nature that such on the descents into the material nations and puts on its phenomenal ignorance as a superficial mask in which he hides himself from his own conscious energy, leaving it self-forgetful and absorbed in its works and forms. So that's exactly what he's saying, is the image that I gave you in the beginning. You have forgotten. And note interestingly that he is giving Satchananda now a personality. He's talking of his his being and his nature. You can consider the highest impersonal divine as well as the personal divine. So Satchananda here is using, because then the image will not be complete if it is impersonal. So if you want to, the image that we discussed just now, it is the divine as a person 
who decides to plunge himself into the opposite of himself. It is to find himself in the apparent opposite of his being. The divine is knows himself fully in the highest, but he also wants to know himself in the lowest. That's what he's saying, and that's why evolution has to come. But right now, the world, the divine is here in the world, but he has not found himself. But when the evolution starts, he finds himself in small degrees. First of all, he finds himself in matter. Then he finds himself in finds himself means he sees that he is in matter. Then he sees that he is in life. Then he sees in mind, and this game goes on until finally the supramental and even beyond is reached. He will find himself only when he, he reaches the supermatter. Otherwise, he is the game that he is playing will be there, and the goal will not be reached. It's only stage by stage that you are going. Okay? This is why the ignorance is necessary. It is necessary if the divine has created an evolutionary world like ours. Otherwise, it won't be necessary. Okay, that's very simple. <clears throat> what is here a state would be the perpetuated state of existence. It is to find himself in the apparent opposite of his being and his nature that subsequently descends into the material nations and puts on its phenomenal ignorance. Note the word phenomenal. The ignorance is not permanent. He will discuss that also. Suppose ignorance is permanent, then it's a big cruelty, but it is not. It is a phenomenon. In other words, it is temporary. Phenomenal means temporary. A phenomenon is something that starts and ends. Okay, it is time bound. Everything in the physical world is time bound. So the ignorance also is time bound. Okay, it may go to several lives or hundreds of lives, but still it is time time bound. Okay, it can be crossed. It can be overcome. Phenomenal ignorance. See the word phenomenal is so much important. The ignorance is not permanent. Okay, puts on his phenomenal ignorance as a superficial mask in which he hides himself from his own conscious energy, leaving itself forgetful. You have forgotten that you have taken the adventure willingly. You yourself have taken the adventure willingly and absorbed in its works and forms. So now. This again is saying your consciousness has disappeared into the power. Okay, that's what he means. At the lowest level, the consciousness, or rather, you can use other way also. You can say that power in the physical world is so powerful, okay, so uh, it is capable of swallowing and eating up consciousness into itself. You can put it that way also. I am using these words so that you can imagine what is it. The consciousness has been eaten up; it's digested. It is there in the in in matter, in the power of matter. But it's the other way around in the self. When you rise in consciousness from matter to life to mind to higher mind, then the consciousness is swallowing up the power. That's why you are immutable at that level. There is no power. Okay, power is there, but you have made it in incapacitated. It you have incapacitated it. <laughs> it is indeed. It is in those forms that the slowly awakening soul has to accept the phenomenal action of an ignorance, which is really knowledge awaking progressively out of the original nations. There is an. There is an evolution. Be don't be impatient and start complaining. Okay, know that you are going to evolve, and you are evolving very very slowly. So slowly that you don't realize that you are evolving. Okay? But when yoga starts, you clearly see the steps of evolution. And it is in the new conditions created by these workings that it has to rediscover itself. The divine has to rediscover himself at this level. And that is being done step by step. He will rediscover himself quite nicely when the super mind comes down, and this super mental race comes on 
then the supramental race will see, oh, oh, that the ignorance which we thought is permanent is not permanent. Okay? We were actually all in this adventure together. That's what you realize. You don't realize that when you're suffering. When you're suffering cancer, when you're suffering uh, incurable diseases. <laughs> you won't feel that. But it's a game. It's a game that came to you. <clears throat> so, and it is in the new conditions created by these workings that it has to rediscover itself and divinely transform by that light. The life which is thus laboring, that's a laboring, huh? hard labor, to fulfill the purpose of its descent into the unconscious. This labor is not a pretended labor anymore, it becomes real. Not to return as speedily as may be to heavens, where perfect light and joy are eternal, or to the supracosmic bliss is the object of this cosmic sight. Not merely to repeat a purposeless round in a long, unsatisfactory groove of ignorance, seeking for knowledge and never finding it perfectly. Okay. But it's a very long sentence. I'll go step by step. I'll go phrase by phrase. Okay. So, not to return as speedily as may be to heavens where perfect light and joy are eternal or to the supracosmic bliss is the object of this cosmic cycle. In other words, evolution is in no hurry at all because the game is an endless game. Some games end in one hour, some games end in two hours, some game end in... Cricket goes on for five days, okay? But this game will go on forever. <laughs> this is, this is, that's what she is saying here. That there is no hurry. Because if it was hurried and you could reach the goal very easily, then the adventure is becoming less. So to adventure, make the adventure infinite, the effort also has to be infinite. <laughs> that's a game. That's the rules of the evolution, the world. So don't complain. That's what it means. You yourself have agreed to it. Not to return as purely as may be to heavens, but perfect light and joy are eternal, or to the supracosmic bliss. This is not the object is the object of this cosmic cycle. Don't get confused, huh? This is the beginning the sentence is not. So, if you take that not out and put it here, then to get joy and go to heavens where bliss and light is perfect is not the object of this cosmic cycle. That's not the object. Not nor merely to repeat a purposeless round in a Long, unsatisfactory grew over ignorance. It's not that the world is, you are taking birth again and again and again and repeating the ignorance and suffering. It's not that also. Every time you come down here, there's a little bit of a progress. It's not a repetition. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Because if it was, then that parenthetical phrase comes in. Okay, if it were like that. Okay? In that case, the ignorance should be either an inexplicable blunder of the all conscient are a painful and purposeless necessity equally inexplicable. Why would the divine make the ignorant permanent? If he did that, he could be accused of being very cruel and inexplicable. Why does the divine do that? The divine would never do that. In fact, that's one of the problems in Christianity and also other religions. You are condemned to be permanently in hell. Okay. Janno. And uh, what is the other word? Janno is the. Uh, so that would be inexplicable. So, very clearly, our Advaita philosophy does not accept this. The divine is not purposely condemning you to a permanent ignorance and suffering. Okay. That is not the purpose. There is an evolution, that is a saving factor. Okay. But to realize the answer, so what is the purpose? The purpose is to realize the ananda of the self in other conditions than the supracosmic, in cosmic being, and to find its heaven of joy and light even in the oppositions offered by the terms of an embodied material existence. Again, I'll have to stop here. The sentence is huge. What Srinivas is saying is that although Mayavada and Buddhism say, 
the demand can be found only at the highest levels who give up the physical world. So if they say, no, I defer, that ananda and the demand can be found even here. But you have to make an effort. And that is going to happen. That's what he's saying. Okay. It has to. Realizing the divine at the highest level of Buddhists and Mayavadins is fine. But why not discover the divine even here in the in the darkness and the ignorance of the physical world? That's what it means. But to realize the ananda of the self in other conditions than the super, supracosm. Supracosm. Okay. Not at the highest level, but at the lowest level. In cosmic being, to find its heaven of joy and light, even in the oppositions offered by the terms of it, embodied material existence. Was by struggle, therefore, towards the joy of self-discovery, would seem to be the true object of the birth of the soul in the human body and of the labor of the human race in the series of its cycles. What are the series of its cycles? The many, many births that you are taking. That would become meaningful only if the purpose but the divine has not put out a public notice or he has not sent a WhatsApp message saying to everybody that this is the game I'm playing and you are also playing the game. You have to discover that is the game. <laughs> okay. The ignorance. You have to discover for yourself. That's an adventure. If the goal is told to you and you are told that this is, there will be a little bit of a relief. But then the adventure is made less adventurous. So, Complete ignorance, you have to find out all this things for yourself. That's the whole point. The ignorance is a necessary, though quite subordinate term, which the universal knowledge has imposed on itself. Note that. Then he was speaking of such and another who plunges into the opposite. Now he's taking up only knowledge. He's saying universal knowledge has imposed on itself that that movement might be possible. Not a blunder and a fall, as some people think. There are people who think that the creation of the physical world is a big blunder. Because they feel that it is permanent. It is not permanent. The ignorance, the suffering, and the lack of ananda and all this in the consciousness is not permanent. Okay. Universal level, it is permanent. But each individual soul has to discover that it is not permanent. He can live in the physical world <laughs> with a divine consciousness. It's a good point. The, <coughs> not a plan. To find and embody the all delight in an intense summary of its manifoldness. To achieve a possibility of the infinite existence which could not be achieved in other conditions. To create out of matter a temple of the divinity would seem to be the task imposed on the spirit born into the material universe. Okay. I think uh, the language is a little difficult, but I made it uh, more easy by uh, giving images and all that. Then it becomes easy to understand about this. Very fantastic uh, para where he's telling you that this is the in our world this is what is being done. It could be that other worlds are there where he is not playing this game at all. Okay. It could be very well. But here it is like this. This is it. You know, here, here is a poetic, what he said. Build the temple of God in matter, which seems to be the opposite of God. To find and embody the all delight in an intense summary of its manifoldness. Now note that. Intense summary of its manifoldness. So, how will you understand this? This manifoldness is infinite. But intense summary is the individual who discovers the divine within himself. Okay? So, so intense summary is very, very concentrated. The individual is a universe, but he is a concentrated universe. To, and the universe is the Expanded individual. You can think of it in that way. Okay. Universe and individual are all same. One is expanded and infinite. The other is contracted and summarized into a small body. 
body, small life and small mind. Okay. And even the small soul. Every individual soul is nothing but the divine soul in essence. Okay. So this is what is okay. Now, if you have digested this para, then we can go to the next one. We have nine minutes. Can we read the next one? Shall I, shall I read? Yes, read that. The ignorance, the ignorance, the ignorance we see is not in the secret soul, soul, but in the apparent prakriti, nor does it belong to the whole of that prakriti. It cannot, for prakriti is the action of the all conscient, but arises in some development from its original integrality of light and power. Where does that development take place? In what principle of being does it find its opportunity and straight point? Not certainly in the infinite being, the infinite consciousness, the infinite delight, which are the supreme planes of existence and from which all else derives or descends into this obscure, ambiguous manifestation. There it can have no place, not in the supermind, for in the supermind, the infinite light and power are always present, even in the most finite workings, and the consciousness of unity embraces the consciousness of diversity. It is on the plane of mind that this putting back of the real consciousness becomes possible. For mind is that power of the conscious being which differentiates and runs along the lines of differentiation with the sense of diversity prominent and terrestrial and the sense of unity behind it only, not characteristics, not the very stuff of its workings. If by any chance this opportunity sense of unity would be drawn back, it is possessed by mind, not in its own separate right, but because it has the super mind behind it. Because it reflects the light of the supermind of which it is a derivative and secondary power, if a veil could fall between mind and supermind, shutting off the light of the truth or letting it come through only in rays, diffused, scattered, reflected, but with distortion and division, then the phenomenon of the ignorance would intervene. Such a veil exists, say the Upanishad, constituted by the action of mind itself. It is in overmind a golden lead which hides the face of the supramental truth but reflects its image. In mind it becomes a more opaque and smoky luminous coverture. That action is the absorbed looking downward of mind on the diversity which is its characteristic movement and away from the supreme unity which that diversity expresses until it forgets altogether to remember and support itself by the unity. Even then, the unity supports it and makes its activities possible, but the absorbed energy is unaware of its own origin and greater real self. Since mind forgets that from which it derived, because of absorption in the working of formative energy, it becomes so far identified with that energy as to lose hold even on itself to become totally oblivious in a trance of work which it still supports in its som somnambulist action, so, but of which it is no longer aware. This is the last stage of the descent of consciousness and abysmal, and abysmal sleep a fathomless trance of consciousness which is the profound basis of the action of material nature. Okay, big para, but you remember he asked three questions. He said, this ignorance, where, why? First of all, he said, why? He had explained the why. Okay. Then he's saying the how and the where. So now he is explaining in this para the where and the how, okay, the process by which the ignorance is created. And where is it created? Very clearly he is telling us it's the overmind consciousness. Okay. So we'll read this carefully, but it may it won't be very easy. We've got only four minutes. So we'll read with this matter. Because again we have to understand his language. 
So, <coughs> what I'll do, I'll just read out the summary today, okay? So that we get the basic idea, okay? So, he's answering those three questions that he raised. Why he has explained? Why should there be ignorance? Okay? It's a game. Then the how and why is in this para here. How and where? Okay? So, where is this ignorance located? And where does it originate? Is it in the soul? No. It is in the prakriti. But it is not even in the entire prakriti. Because there is a... Just one second. It is not even in the where is this ignorance located and where does it originate? It is, is it in the soul? No. But it's in prakriti. But it is not even in the entire prakriti. Because there is a... Para prakriti and an apara prakriti. The apara is a mechanical nature that we see in the world around us. The para prakriti is a divine nature, one with consciousness and knowledge. So, where then is ignorance? Where is it starting? It is not in the highest absolute or infinite consciousness, nor is it in the super mind. It is in the mind regions that it becomes possible to relegate the infinite consciousness into the background. Mind has the power to differentiate. It increasingly goes towards multiplicity while reducing its awareness of unity and oneness. Can this supporting action of unity, upholding multiplicity, be reduced <laughs> in a definite manner? Can the veil be drawn between supermind, unity and oneness, and the mind regions in which there is increasing division and multiplicity? He is asking questions. It is stated in the Upanishad, the Isha Upanishad, particularly. Okay? The golden lid covers the face of the sun of truth, Gnosis, supermind. This lid, Hiran Mayana Patrena, that's the word used in the Isha Upanishad. This lid allows some rays of the truth to percolate and seep through into the overmind, but causing distortion, diffusion, and scattering effect. The scattering effect is like the prism that scatters the white light into seven colors. The scattering effect. It is the overmind that hides the face of the supermind and looks not upwards as much as downwards. The super mind does not look as much upward as it is looking downwards. This movement ends with a complete oblivion of the humanity and the ignorance. Non-awareness of oneness is established. The one descends into the density of matter and apparently becomes the many. This complete consciousness becomes a state of inconscience. So the whole process of division which is the starting point of ignorance, starts at the overmind level. Okay? That is why he said that the overmind is not yet the, and he reached an overmind in 1926. Okay? And after that, he realized that this is not the supermind. That's why he completely withdrew himself to concentrate fully and bring the supermind down. So, 26, 36, 46. 1950. So, 24 years. Struggle hard while doing physical work. Okay? Physical work means replying to letters, pulling down the consciousness all the time. He used to devote half an hour. Because in one letter to Amal Kiran, he says, uh, Amal Kiran is always bothering me. Please look at my essay and tell me whether it's okay. Please look at my poems. And sometimes his essays, he used to put on the table and he wouldn't find time for it. So one, he says, one, your essay has got displaced by the horizontal uh, tectonic plate, plates moving, you know, the continental plates moving, it has got displaced. <laughs> and he said, I have no time, I have very little time, and he tells him, what is that? He tells him, the whole night I am replying to letters. Then after that, bath, breakfast and all, then after that, some concentration for some time. And I have no intention of giving it that 
or giving up their concentration. So what was their concentration? Pulling down the super minds. Pulling it down. Pulling it down. He said in one letter to Nirvata, I have got the, I have got the tail of the super mind. Even at that level, he is joking. Okay? He said, I have got the tail of the super mind and I am pulling it down. And mother has said in one place, I used to see him pulling, 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 pulling. For 24 years he did that. Okay? From 1926 to 1950. And 1950 took a big decision that I will go into the subtle world and from there I will work and mother will remain in the physical world and he will complete the work. That was the decision taken. So, we will redo this back. Okay? Because he is explaining the process, the how it takes place. That how is very interesting. So, Sunki, note down that we will do this para once again. We will reread 630 which yes. the ignorance we see. Okay. Yes, I'll make a note. Yeah. Okay, so now we are nearing to the, the end of the, the ignorance, how it is, why it is necessary, how it is done, and where it is done. Okay. 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 Thank you, Rangada. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.